Now, it's not been confirmed that Ukraine is behind these attacks. So, so what does it mean that either Ukraine or pro-Ukraine groups in Crimea, does that mean that they are showing some strength there? You rightly said that Crimea is the annexed territory, a territory that has been annexed by Russia in 2014, but it's really important to point out that it is Ukrainian territory. And thereby, it is my opinion that we have the right to uh, counterattack on all of our territory, including Crimea, and push back Russian forces. Essentially, if we're talking about a victory for Ukraine and a victory for democracy, and also bringing back long-standing peace to Europe, we must be talking about bringing back every single inch of Ukrainian territories back to Ukraine and pushing out Russian armies from every single inch of Ukrainian territory, that is Crimea included. But Ukraine, the government itself has denied that it's behind these attacks. So who is behind them? Right, that I cannot tell you, uh, simply because I do not know. But I can tell you for sure that Ukraine uh, will be working towards regaining control over all of our territories. So what does this mean for Crimea's position? It's extremely heavily fortified by Russian military. Could this change Russia's approach, do you think, to the peninsula, as in it needs to fortify it even firm further? I don't know how they can fortify it even further. There are... Uh, Russian Navy located and Russian Navy bases that are located in Crimea as they have been for decades now. But uh, we, uh, Ukraine and also the intelligence services uh, of the partners of Ukraine, we know very well where they are. We know very well their strengths. And I think that there can be and there should be ways to work, work around it. Because without regaining control of, of Crimea and without rejoining Crimea to Ukraine, the same as all of the uh, all of the other parts of Ukraine, including the Donetsk and Luhansk parts, uh, which have been occupied since 2014, we will not be able to confidently say that peace has been reinstated in Europe. Let's see it. The US has pledged $775 million now in security assistance to Ukraine. How important is that level of international support at this stage of the war? Of course, we are grateful to the US, but it's also other countries who are constantly making pledges and increasing the uh, military contributions they are making to uh, increase Ukraine's defense and security capabilities. All this is a sort of investment, if you like, into the security framework, which is so necessary today. If the war is... Um, is allowed to proceed even further and is not contained within the territory of Ukraine, there is a large risk that the Baltic states will fall prey to Russia's aggression and then perhaps even parts of Poland and other Eastern European countries. We are still very much aware of that. And it's not just the Ukrainians, but also the representatives of these Eastern European countries who are constantly, constantly saying uh, and um, reiterating this risk. So this is why it's absolutely um, imperative that uh, the weapon supplies keep coming to Ukraine, that they are steady and that they are steadfast. And this is why this uh, financial uh, contributions to, to Ukraine's defense and security, uh, again, I will say that we are extremely grateful, but they will be needing to go on the increase if Ukraine is to win this war fast yeah. and by, I mean, by winter. You still need more.